Welcome back to episode 3 of a Max ECU conversion on this uh, Escort Series 1 RS Turbo. Now, before we start, a bit of an apology. Um, essentially, I've been doing bits and pieces to this, um, and in one of the same in one of my other videos, I lost the camera. <laughs> so, excuse the jump. Uh, in the last video, we just finished loom taping um, the loom that we installed into the car. Um, and then this video is going to jump a little bit. Hopefully, you're not going to miss anything that may be of interest or importance. Um, yeah, so my apologies for that. It's, it's, it's very poor of me. I'm not a YouTuber. I just sort of point the phone at things. But I did buy a camera and started using that. Lost it. So I'm going to stick to the phone, I think. Um, so this is pretty much ready to go. Um, it's ready to turn key. So... Um, we're just going to try and find a day where we can just get it running and pop it on a dyno. Ashley, the car's owner, he's having a nice new garage built for this car. Um, and it looks epic and I'm very jealous of your garage, Ashley. Um, but yeah, like hopefully this will just go straight into his nice new garage as soon as that's done. Um, yeah, she's going to be pampered little girl, I think. So yeah, please ignore my absolute idiocy of losing footage. If I find it, I'll delete this video again and add it in. Maybe I will, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so skip, jump, here we go. Okay, so we're under the, uh, see the bottom pulley now. Um, the original vehicle would have had no CPS, no crank position at all. Um, the EFI Fiestas, as, as we've said before, they have the, the flywheel, which has the machined back. Um, we don't have that, um, and this was destined initially for the Cosworth system. So this has got like a four position um, pulley wheel and bolted to the rear of this. I decided to pull this off because um, I think we may upgrade this. This has got the Cosworth bottom pulley uh, arrangement on it, which is four equidistant um, teeth. I'm thinking we'll upgrade this. Um, and the reason I'm thinking I'm, that I'll upgrade this is because I started to, um, there are bolts on the back to adjust this and I was just going to time this uh, correctly because it's out and I, the bolts are on the back and I've, I've just come to undo this and this was hand tight and the more and more that I've gone around the car I've noticed that there are lots of bolts missing, the starter motor is held in by one, the gearbox is held in by three so I think it's probably a good time for like a a nut and bolt check we'll pull this off see if we can get like a, a better timing wheel for the back of this um and we'll just um back shelf it for a couple of weeks until i can get one of those um and we'll just go around and do a nut and bolt check so i'm a bit concerned yeah, there's even a bolt missing up there on the housing. so yeah we'll, we'll do that hopefully that won't take us too long um and we can work ourselves through okay that's the bottom pulley removed um we can actually see that this is uh <laughs> this is loose as well so i'm really pleased we had to pull that off because that could have set us up with some um, potential dramas in the future um so this company they used to be about loads back in the good old days i've googled them and they still seem to be about but they don't stock um different types of these anymore and i can't say i'm surprised um most people doing um cbh efi stuff will use a flywheel which is kind of readily available. However, this situation is is leading us down. Um, this is the natural progression for this conversion because it's already got these bits on here, and this is a really nice piece of engineering. All we need to do is um, draw this up with a uh, with a better positioning tooth wheel. Um, bolt that to the back. Job done. Okay, lovely job. So um, Steph has water jet cut this for us now. Um, you see how many more teeth it's got, and it's got this missing tooth arrangement so that it's got an actual position rather than a generic 90 degrees. Really pleased. Um, the only thing I've got to do now is on, on this, it's got like a, a chamfered edge there. Just sit against that tight. So we'll just go and use uh, Jam Jam's lathe, and we'll just tickle that out there so that, that fits, and we'll get that bolted back in. Uh, there we go, 
it's uh, I've only managed to just put like a chamfer on it. Um, just run a bit of emery cloth around there, so now that fits on there, nice and flat. So we can uh, we can set this roughly up to 60 degrees before TDC, um, then we'll bolt it in, bolt it back on the car. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so this is the CPS bracket. I've had to modify this very slightly. Um, and I'm going to have to put a spacer here. The Because this is a ZVH, the oil pump setup is different to the CVH. Um, so we just have to move this around very slightly just to modify it to make it fit. Um, this is just a normal VR sensor. We'll gap this to about a millimetre once this is once we've got the wheel, the, the time wheel back in. And um, we should be gold. Okay, so good news is um, the, the entirety of the crank pickup is complete. It's the connector's now plugged in. You can see the loom coming in on the top. Now I've kind of noticed while I'm under here that the um, the main battery cable is is just flopping around and yeah, it's not rooted very nicely. It's pretty shit. So we'll trim this down, I think. And the other thing I've noticed, which is even more concerning, is that the uh, the start the the starter is linked to the alternator um, on the, on the original car, so the starter will be at the front. So there's only one. Oh, sorry, I just about get in here. So yeah, it looks like this this is six mil at best. This goes to the, the correct cable and that goes round to the alternator. Um, but this one looks like it goes to the exciter uh, for the coil. Um, having looked at the alternator, it has the original uh, cabling there. So I think we need to pull that apart, um, maybe pull that piece of loom off. I'll be honest, I just kind of anticipated that that was correct. Um, so I think we'll pull that apart and sort that main battery cable out. And I'll probably check that the earth straps are proper as well while I'm thinking on it. Because I think a lot of it has just come off and not looked at since. So uh, that'll be the next point of call. Okay, so um, essentially just cut the pipes put back on. Um, the fan wiring um, and the... Uh, lambda wiring I've just put in this is like fairly inexpensive it's just a, a wrap around uh, heat protector it's just got a bit of a sticky back foil there that's available just from Hilltop I use quite a lot of that and these do suffer with quite a lot of heat under here so hopefully this will look after the wiring as, as, as well as it can I mean the the actual lambda sensor cable here itself uh, is heat protected but I've run some extra wires in there from the other fans in the same piece so hey I just well keep it in that in that same bit but yeah essentially cut the boost pipes put back on and i can lower it down um and we are ready to rock just gotta connect a few bits and pieces up upstairs done so working myself around now um all of my loom is now pretty much fitted from the engine uh, or engine related stuff i've got this um which is a an auxiliary just got some five volts some sensor grounds and various analog and digital inputs cut of outputs um, you never know who wants to add like a temperature sensor or or something like that so we're going to put like a dt connector there i'm just sort of a i've got some of my dt connector boxes and various connector boxes down so um we'll do this uh, one thing that i have noticed which um obviously is going to cause me a bit of issue a bit of drama is the the fuel pressure regulator i've just bolted on it's an aftermarket one the the original one goes on in a very similar place in fairness but um i bolted this on now it was supplied um but not fitted and it's become very obvious that the breather system is is it's just not going to work so i'm going to have to have a bit of a redesign bit of a rethink on that um a bit of a pain to be honest but you know it is what it is it's it's the nature of the beast normally the the cage electronic stuff kind of comes around here and uh, it comes over there actually in fairness but this there's room for this there isn't an fpr here so other than that um i've just been sort of as i say slowly going around bolting everything up the two main battery cables are now resolved i've i've had to come up here um i'll put some tie wraps against this water hose and tie that nicely um hopefully it won't look too obnoxious um but yeah, so yeah, so next up is to finish this. This is the, my supplies off into the um, for the battery. We've got to fuse some supplies, and we've got to wire up the ignition amp and the ignition coil. Um, then that's pretty much it, I think. Um, so we're getting there slowly, getting there slowly. So pretty much resolved, I think. Now everything is now connected. Um, I finished wrapping the wiring, which goes under there. I've got some fuses to go up next to the battery there. I've not used any of the main. Um, 
the original main load wiring. Um, a lot of the wiring in the car is old. Uh, we don't want to build a whole brand new car loom. So anything that's load bearing um, is all brand new and it's going to be fused there and relayed down by our ECU, which we fitted onto in a wing. Um, a couple of bits and pieces. I had to put some heat shrink. Uh, like this is adhesive heat shrink. This is on because this is something stupid like seven millimeter, um, and and this is eight millimeter. So, so I put some adhesive heat shrink on there, which has made that now nice and tight. Um, I, I, it's not something I normally have done, being honest, but I've seen that so many times now on the the AirTech intakes on the on the Mark II Focus and the ST and the RS. So it's obviously more than up to the task. So, so yeah, that's that dealt with. All the fuel lines are tight, um, and I've got yet to pressure test those, but that's a job that we'll do in the next video. Uh, she still looks beautiful. I do love these things. But, yeah, uh, until next time, please click like and subscribe. All of those things, a little bell and all of those bits and pieces. Until next time, have a wonderful new year, and I'll uh, speak to you all soon.